Hi you guys, this is Rachel here, the Modern Shaman. Thanks for being with me for another YouTube Q&A video of the week. If you're new to my channel, I'm glad you're here and I'd love for you to visit my website, themodernshaman.net. Really, if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me, that is the best way to get in touch with me and schedule a booking. As well as if you would like to take my masterclass and go deeper into your psychic development as well as your intuitive awareness, energetic awareness, and all of the modalities in between. I love teaching. I do have my master's degree in education. And so within this field, um, I feel like there's a lacking aspect of education that we need to know this stuff. We are spirit that inhabits this form and there's just not a lot that's taught to us as children growing up in a human body for this experience. So I have heart for that. And again, if you'd like to learn, the website's the best way to begin this. I have a lot of online classes um, that kind of walk you through the steps of strengthening your innate abilities that are already there. Okay, let's get on with the question of the week. This week, it says, Rachel, thank you so much for your channel. I've been watching you for years and never asked a question. That brings me, I should say, I forgot to mention it. If you'd like to send in a question for this uh, video channel, you go to the website and you just type it in on the contact form and it gets sent to me and put in a little list and I pull one out every week. All right, so where was I? I'd like to ask you how to clear dark, heavy, parasitic entities. I feel like these in particular are difficult for me and I have a fear of them since I was a child. Any help would be appreciated. Okay, dark, parasitic entities. So my first piece of advice is don't fear them. I know you said you have a fear since you were a child, but even the title like that, Dark Parasitic Entities, it sounds horrifying. And some of the language and the frequencies within our semantic words or the way that we say and express and articulate things, um, we have to be really conscientious about that. I think as a society, the more and more higher vibrational that we become as a species, the more conscientious we will be with our language. And if you uh, channel or have worked with mediums or those that um, express from higher dimensional planes and help bring that information in, you'll notice one of the identifiable factors is that the language has an aspect of precision pacing, meaning it's slower, it's very deliberate, and oftentimes I'm talking about expressing energy and <coughs> it's asking me to clear it. Sorry. Had a little blockage in there. <coughs> so that's one of the ways you clear blockages. <laughs> in the shamanic community, you cough it out, you spit it out. <clears throat> so back to what I was saying, you'll notice um, that the language has precision and it has conscientious awareness to it. And oftentimes there are fewer words spoken the higher and higher dimensional frequencies we get into as a medium and as a channel for that energy. Um, so I would be conscientious about the way that you language this. Be aware. Don't feed the energy. So I have a few, I probably have a few videos on this, honestly. Um, the question of protection and when people feel like they're under psychic attack or energetic attack, this is a big one that comes up in our non-physical world. And in my masterclass teaching curriculum, there are several modules that um, I would love to have you do because it gets into the activity of it. So seek those out. Again, they're on the website. First and foremost, I would say that. Do those modules <laughs> because it will make it practical in your life. You know what I mean? It's different than just hearing about something. 
so much of our um, spiritual or non-physical learning has to be experiential. We have to actually do it in our life. Otherwise, it remains in this etheric knowledge realm, which is why knowledge doesn't have a lot of power. It just sits here like a cloud of information. Only when it's integrated into our body, meaning we are doing an action with physical gestures, with speech, um, an activity where we are, we are um, expelling or we are stating or we are claiming or standing. So action needs to be done. Okay, that's the first thing I would kind of guide you toward those modules. Um, I like to express or explain this to take the fear out of it because parasitic entities, and dark just means they have density to them, a lower frequency, they're heavier. Uh, and those of you that are clairsentient and feel energy, empathic, feel emotional energy, you will feel a heaviness, a depression, a sorrow, a darkness, a weight even. Uh, some people feel pressure. Uh, some people feel pulling. Again, if you're highly clairsentient and sensitive to energetic movement and placement, you will feel this when an entity is pulling from you. And this is super common, okay? Just as common as the common cold. So don't freak yourself out. Again, giving into the fear if you're experiencing um, depression or you're experiencing those sensations in the body that feel like something is pulling from you or holding you back or dragging you down. This is just a kind of big flashing neon sign that says, I need to do a clearing, I need to clear myself, I need to get clean. Just like we have hygiene in our bath, you must have energetic hygiene to keep yourself clean, okay? And I do this every day. So, I mean, I deal with a lot of people in this realm, but even in my household, was ever since we moved into this new house and um, we ha we still have a lot of people working here. We still have pool people and landscaping people and tile people and people putting in the railing for the stairs and there's still a lot of things. So there's a lot of energy coming in and out of the space. So I'm saging every day, uh, continually <laughs> having that sage going. I am clearing all the time. Um, and so all that being said, it needs to be done just to keep a sense of hygienic cleanliness to your energetic field, especially if one of your connections to the non-physical realm is clairsentience, if you're dominantly clairsentient. Again, that's the psychic sense of being able to feel energy that is non-physical in very precise ways. Some people can feel it incredibly precise. So taking the fear out of it, like I said, I like to kind of explain it and compare it to cells in the body, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and um, viruses and disease that get into the body, okay? Because our fear or our lower electromagnetic frequencies feed entities. They feed off of them um, and not in a like vampire way. I mean, you could personify it that way if you want, but to me that just amplifies the fear. So more so like a cell, right? Um, we have the red blood cells, which are carrier cells. They're more like the feminine energy. They just kind of move and have momentum and they bring the oxygen through to all the different areas of the body, replenish the body. The white blood cells are more like the masculine extroverted. They fight, they fight off, right? And when we have normal cells, they are dividing and dying. Dividing and dying, that is the life cycle of the cell, right? Uh, same is true of our human body when we see it and it follows the same um, laws of nature and cellular degeneration and regeneration. Uh, when disease gets in the body and cancer cells in particular, and cancer cells are parasitic, they feed, off of other cells and they are highly intelligent. So um, the more intelligent the entity or interdimensional being, be it consciousness or form, the more intelligent it will respond to your natural ways of trying to evade it. So like a cancer cell, um, it continually divides. 
So instead of dying off, it's like a zombie. <laughs> it's a zombie cell. So it divides and instead of dying, it just keeps itself all mutated and it continues to divide, 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 divide. So it has an element of it that tricks the body. It also uh, spreads. So anything it presses up against, it infects, right? Like all these zombie things. I keep it. I keep literally envisioning right here in my clairvoyance, a zombie. <laughs> but, and you see how we could personify that and say, oh, that's a scary person, you know, zombie cell, if we wanted to express it that way. That's why I said we have to be conscientious at the beginning of this video about our semantics, the way we language or put into form. Language, this is the use of spells, you guys. When you pull energy into language and you get precise with expression it literally brings it into the 3d manifesting in that way this is how we create it so if you don't want to think and you don't want to have parasites look like vampires or parasites or leeches on you do not express it that way do not pull it into form and create like a spell of imbuing that into personified expression. Don't pull it into 3D like that. Just realize that it is essentially a mutated cell. And when we think about cells and we think about mutations of cells, these are just gene mutations, okay? DNA mutations. This is why sometimes they, this is why they believe that cancer is hereditary, right? That it's in our genes. However, don't forget the power of the cutting science of epigenetics that literally has shown scientifically through the studies that by just your intentional uh, decision, right, Sim similar to quantum mechanics, by observation, by intentional observation of what we think will happen determines the result. This has been quantitative and qualitatively defined and shown, okay? They're scientifically proving that you can take latent cells in the body and decide what genetics turn on and what turns off, how to activate latent DNA and how to, um, I guess, turn it off. So that being said, cancer cells respond the same way. So there is so much power when you are dealing with these dark parasitic entities, I'm using your language and kind of jokingly, um, when we are able to shift the intentional frequency into the positive. Now, if you've never seen a um, electromagnetic spectrum of your emotional frequencies. Your emotional frequencies can be read. I can't remember the name of the device. I like it's, if it's a spectrometer, I, I don't know. But anyways, there's devices that can read your electromagnetic frequencies in the human body and your emotions have a spectrum. Shame is the lowest. So when dark entities or when you begin to feed shame, self-deprecation, all of this, this is a very low frequency. You need to shift out of that. You need to distract yourself out of that, okay? And clean and clear. Go through saging, go through, I have videos and modules on that too. You really, you can find this information anywhere. It's not like I have something, you know, that is not available to all of you. The information's out there to clean and clear yourself. Um, if you don't know how to do it, ask for help, but it's important to get out of that. Uh, fear is about a hundred on the electromagnetic, uh, frequency range. It is also a lower level frequency. Um, and so these feel heavy, they pull us in, they recluse our being and consciousness. The higher frequencies are joy, peace, enlightenment. I mean, surprise, surprise, right? So when we are in these places, essentially, this is creating protection from these lower level entities because they have nothing to feed off of. They're starving, they, they move on. There's nothing there, it's like a, you're like a desert. So there's nothing to eat here. There's nothing to feed off of. 
uh, when your immune system is functioning and your white blood cells are clearing, clearing, clearing and doing what they are created to do, the gene mutations don't turn on. They stay latent in the body. Even if you're hereditary, uh, your, I was going to say hereditary response or hereditary traits show that everyone in your family has had breast cancer. When your white blood cells are doing what they're supposed to do and they, they are illuminated in that white higher frequency, right? Of acceptance, love, compassion, peace. These are all higher frequencies. Like 500 and up is, is peace and enlightenment and joy. These literally will burn off anything heavy and dense, kill it off. Uh, they begin to kind of radiate like a natural radiation and burn off the heavy, dense um, frequencies. So it's a natural sense of protection to stay vibrationally in higher emotional states. And y'all, that is, it's so simple. I'm explaining this like this, but literally watch a happy movie. Don't watch the sad ones that just depress you or something like this. Don't listen to all of the arguments that are just on TV constantly if you're watching politics or listening to that. I mean, don't exacerbate the emotional energy of negative feeding. You kind of have to go against what the norm in our systems encourage because the systems of humanity encourage drama and dark parasitic entities feed off of that drama which is why they come in droves and um, try to poke you with the fear laughter laughing them off joking um, and saying absolutely not not even responding with a, uh, a response of fear or not like, no, 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 you can't do this. You can't get here. When I teach creating psychic boundaries, we always talk about how to inhibit them in your sovereignty, how to vibrate out just like, this is my absolute, this is the way it is. This is who I am. I am a being of light. I am a being of purity and joy and truth and glory. All of this. Flooding the body, flooding the body. So there's my expression about understanding. I know I mentioned that my teaching modules go into activities and you asked how to clear them. I would first identify where they are. If you are clairsentient enough to feel them in certain areas of the body, because they may go after certain uh, chakras. Typically they do. They attach to solar plexus if you have some uh, sense of self issues, like you don't know who you are or you, you don't have a strong identity or, um, or you struggle with self-esteem. Um, if you've been heartbroken, they may attach to the heart chakra, essentially areas of weakness. And again, this is just like viruses in our immune system. When we have areas of weakness, we're like, man, I was eating all that crap, and so now I have all this sinus stuff going on. There, there was an area that was a weak area that um, those viruses attached onto and exacerbated what was already there. Started pulling and feeding on that. So the same is true. And again, just view them like some sort of cellular process on a different energetic level, okay? Just as we at times have fed off of plants and we feed off of the energy that is in um, animals if we eat animals. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, so I don't, but I do feed off of the energy that's in fruits and vegetables. And there is a life source that is fed to me in that way. So this is the same type of process that is a natural process, although higher vibrational fruits have an aspect to them where they already die. They naturally, the fruits fall off the trees before we eat them, right? So the same should be true when you are in your blooming state. Um, 
once you have identified, <laughs> sorry, I feel like I get, I kind of go on a tangent and I want to keep this video short. It's already long. But once you've identified where those entities are feeding off of, you need to clear that out. You can do it through intention. You can do it through a clearing ceremony, like having a shaman or a Reiki practitioner, an energy clearing person that knows how to do this or has been trained in it to clear it. You can literally use your hands, okay, which have strong electromagnetic currents through the edges of them. You can use magnets. Magnets are very powerful um, for manipulating magnetic current, okay? So is quartz crystal. It's piezoelectric in its essence, which is why it's the basis of computer systems, for all of these things. So you can utilize stones if you know how to do them. Hematite, that magnetic stone that's magnetically charged, and essentially run it down the meridians, clearing, run it through, again, any areas that is pulling whatever is in there, and setting the intention that any and all dark or parasitic entities must leave your body and your energetic field now. Give it a timeline. Give it a direction. They must leave your body and your energetic field. You can put them into things, like put them into the rock, put them into the stone, send them to the light, send them back to where they came. You can give a directional um, momentum. But essentially, you're pulling them out and relieving them from your body and your energetic field. Okay. Then from there, you can move through into the ether, which is the saging process. You can use feathers through, through this. Um, you can use Palo Santo, sage. You literally light it like incense, light it. I don't know. I'm looking around my room to see my sage is right by the front door. <laughs> so I don't want to get up and get it. But I have videos on that process too, and that's, that's available. And honestly, when your intentional energy is sincere, I'm clearing it right now. That is the power of your sovereign free will. All entities and spirits, because we live in the domain of free will, must abide by that. Just remember that they are listening to the language of your frequency. So your frequency has to line up with it. You have to mean what you say. You have to mean it. And for us as humans, if we're not used to meaning what we say, we're used to half-truthing and kind of evading and not having precise language, this can be difficult. So I always encourage people to stand up, take a firm stance, right? I'm gonna stand up off camera to where your feet are firmly planted on the floor. You're barefooted, I would re recommend, because this is grounding. Remember, you are an electromagnetic entity. So grounding that frequency with that of Mother Earth, just like all of our electronics in our household have to have a grounding wire when they get wired into our house, okay? The same is true for you. So barefooted, firmly place your feet on the floor and of that grounding element, standing in your authority and speak it out loud. That same phrase, all dark and parasitic entities must leave my body and my energetic field now. And then clean and clear. <laughs> Sage it out. All right, I hope that was helpful to you guys. I realize uh, that was a little lengthy, so hope that some of it spoke to you and you can digest in um, little bits at a time. I will be back here next week with another video. Mwah! Blessings.